Welcome to Android Dialogues, where we have bite-sized conversations with people from the Android community. I'm Chuki Chen, and today we are chatting with Yash Prabhu. Hello, Yash. Hi. How are you? Good. How are you?、Um, where are you based, and what do you do? I'm、uh, from Philadelphia, and I'm the Android team lead at Drama Fever, which is an international media streaming company that、uh, gets TV shows and movies from outside of America and subtitles it in three different languages. We have about 10 million users, and、uh, we are on all platforms: Android, iOS, smart TVs, Roku, and so on.、Uh, we're also hiring, so <laughs> already doing her plug. <laughs> well, which is totally fine because we're actually at Drama Fever right now, and she kindly let us use the space. Thank so you. thank you very much. <laughs> and how do you get started on Android? So、uh, I was in grad school, and I just took a. Course called Emerging Web Technologies, and every week we had to build something new. So, every week, yes, that's pretty demanding <laughs> course. So I took.、Um, uh, so one of the、uh, you know one of the weeks it was build an Android app from scratch, and I built a very simple app which was finding out all the food trucks in、uh, in the U Penn University of Pennsylvania area、right. and just listing all of them out. Okay,、uh, and getting more information when you click on it. So it was essentially just a list view, and you click on it, and you get more information about in a week. Yeah,、mm, that's so, pretty good. <laughs> and、yeah. then once you're in, you're hooked. You really yeah, want to do more Android.、Yeah. I really enjoyed doing it. It was a completely different way of building things because you're building things right from you know beginning to end, and、uh, I just love doing it, and I've been、mm-hmm. doing it ever since. Great. So basically, you did that in grad school, and then you got a job as an Android developer.、Mm-hmm. Great. That's really cool. And、uh, the other thing that I'm interested in learning more about is、uh, in that payment, because I know that you're giving this talk at Joycon,、mm-hmm. and I want to make money. <laughs> so how does it work? Like, how do I add in that payment to my app so that I can make some money? Yeah. So.、Uh It kind of depends on what revenue model you want to use.、Mm. Uh, so you could go with freemium or paid. Right.、Uh, with paid, you、uh, basically buy the app off of the Play Store, and then、um, you know you can just go about using it. But with freemium model, you're offering users the choice of trying out your app for free,、mm-hmm. and then you can lock something behind a paywall or a premium wall, so users can、uh, play around with your app before buying、uh, the premium feature. So. My app is gonna. My talk is gonna focus more on the freemium model and how you can、okay. uh, integrate in-app billing API into your app, as well as Google Play Developer API on the server side, if you choose to do so. So, when you say behind the paywall, does it mean that when I download the app, it's kind of like I got only half of the app?、Mm-hmm. I only get. To a certain point, and then if I want to do more, I have to pay. Yes.、Um, so what kind of what kind of features do you typically hide behind that paywall? Like an extra level in a game, or like、yeah. an extra color when you want to draw a picture? Like what? What? Like if I want to structure my app so、mm-hmm. that I can have a separation between the like free part and the pay part, like how how would you do that?、Uh, so you have two kinds of、uh, products on.、Uh, The Google Play Store. If you go with a freemium model,、so、yeah, you have managed products which are for one-time purchases, okay, and then you have subscription products which are automated and recurring. So at Drama Fever, we mostly use subscription products because we're a media streaming company and we want to generate the revenue every month. So、uh, we have annual and monthly products.、Mm-hmm. Uh, so users can just subscribe for it and they get access to say premium content、okay. like premium TV shows and premium. So.、Movies. I could imagine in an alternative world, you are going to be buying one particular drama and then watching it, and、yes. that will be the managed product or the one-time、yeah. thing.、Uh, or in in the case of Drama Fever, you are just buying an all-you-can-eat all buffet. Essentially, you're、yeah. buying the subscription, and you can watch your heart's content.、Mm-hmm. And as long as you renew every month,、yeah. um, you are fine.、Mm-hmm. I, I I should also mention that、mm-hmm. Google takes a thirty percent cut out of every purchase that your user makes. So、right. uh, you only get seventy percent of the money. I think it's for paid、uh, apps as well. It is okay. So paid app, you also take thirty percent off. And if you think that this is a lot,、mm-hmm. uh, if you go to the other side, the iOS side, I think they also Apple take, and Amazon yeah, both do thirty percent as so well. Yeah. yeah. If you if you want to use um, well, I I think it's actually a violation of the、uh, terms of service if you want to. Kind of circumvent it and try to charge people another、yeah. way. So if you if you are publishing your app on Google Play and you do want to have this kind of extra service that people pay for,、mm-hmm. you have to give Google some money. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Which I mean, I mean, part of 
of it is you get the distribution, right? It's not like you're just paying them for nothing, right? Because mm-hmm. a lot, most people will go find the apps on Google Play. So yeah, it's a distribution channel. Yeah, and uh, it helps if you're on the Amazon App Store to use Amazon's in-app billing service. If right. you're on Google, use Google's in-app billing service because you cannot use either of them. So basically, that's actually Amazon an store. interesting question, though. Like, is Drama People also on the Amazon? Store? We are, but we do not offer premium subscriptions okay. on Amazon. Because I'm imagining that um, if I have most of the code would be the same, right? But then I have this little piece that is handling the payment for Google Play, and then this other piece that's handling the payment for Amazon. Like, it will become difficult to manage the code base. Like, do you run into that problem at Drama Fever? We make sure that it runs on both, um, you know, Google and Amazon. We always make sure that during the QA cycle, we test on um, both. But do you depend on different, dip- like, but you will depend on different libraries, right? Like the version that's shipping on Google Play yes. will depend on the in-app purchase yeah. library, whereas it doesn't make any sense to ship that with the version that goes into Amazon because you're not going to use that functionality. Do you yeah. use flavors or any particular way we to manage that? We do use flavors that? for that. Okay. Uh, we uh, do some sort of magic on build.gradle <laughs> <laughs> yeah. to make sure that uh, you know the app works on uh, both stores, both devices, uh, as in Amazon or Google devices. Cool. And I want to ask a little bit more about subscription because the way I imagine subscription is like a magazine subscription. So maybe I get an annual subscription. And then usually what happens is if I get an annual subscription from a magazine and it's about to expire, then I get this like warning, warning, um, your subscription is going to expire. So in the case of Google Play, um, do they provide infrastructure for the user so that they know that, oh, you know, my Drama FIFA subscription is going to expire or you, the developer, is responsible for alerting the user? Uh, so the, the developer is responsible okay. in this case because... The so we'll just abruptly cut them if like, they Yeah, the forgot. first time a user buys it, uh, you do get um, uh, an email from Google Play Store saying you have bought a subscription right. and it's a Like a receipt for the user. Like a receipt. Mm-hmm. And, uh, after that, it's up to you to kind of follow inform up with the them. users, mm-hmm. uh, follow up with them, and you know do a lot of that kind of work because uh, a lot of the handling is on the developer. It just Google gives you. So just it's almost enough. just like Google is like a credit card. Like you just charge through that, and then you get money through the Google Play mm-hmm. infrastructure. They don't handle any of the user support or any of the yeah. other other side of the mm-hmm. transaction, which is. Um, all up to you. Um, so for subscription product, like, can I have different length of subscription? Can I buy like a monthly subscription yes. and uh, an annual subscription? Yeah. Like, can they upgrade from a monthly to annual? Or you have to repay. Like, so how, you how, can how do that all work? of that. The, okay. they, you get a lot of options with subscriptions. You uh-huh. can do weekly, which is seven days, monthly, annual, and you can also do seasonal, which has oh. a specific start date and end so date. So if I'm going to watch a particular sports team, then mm-hmm. I can do that. Yeah. Interesting. So you know, sports season or holiday season, you can use that seasonal thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, uh, free trials um, on subscriptions. Oh, so okay. a minimum of seven days, uh, maximum of 30 days. So you oh, can do that. You can also upgrade and downgrade between the subscription tiers. Uh, and Google will apply the balance on a prorated oh. basis. Uh, At least they handle that. <laughs> yes, yeah. they do. So all of these are cool features that they recently introduced. Mm-hmm. Um, they have a lot more, uh, like manual renewal, deferred billing, and a bunch of things. But they help you with that on the Google Play Store. But mm-hmm. a lot of the uh, logic handling and everything should be done by the developer. Okay, interesting. Um, so, say I've never done in-app purchase, how how will I get started? Like, what what do I need to add something to my Gradle file? Do I need to go grab a jar somewhere? Like, how does that work? So, there's no library, there's no jar. You just oh. go straight to <laughs> okay. uh, the SDK, and in the extra section, you can download. You know, from the SDK manager, get extras. And there's a Google Play billing, uh, you know, a package. Okay. Just take the AIDL file from there, and a bunch of Java helper classes for uh, billing. And why don't they put the Java classes in the library? I don't get it. I don't know. This <laughs> this is the way it's implemented, okay. and it, it's well, it's not the most efficient way, but it works. So everybody copy and paste, yeah, copy and paste. <laughs> the Java yeah. files. Okay. Yeah, uh-huh. it works. And then you have the convenience uh, uh, convenience methods in the IAB helper Java class. Uh-huh. So IAB stands for in-app billing. So you can just right. make use of all those methods in there to launch the purchase flow and uh, do a lot more things with it. Okay. And so 
that's the app side. Is there any other like so? For example, you know, when I do maybe like Google Maps integration, I have to actually go and submit my the SHA of my of my key and mm -hmm. make sure that everything matches up. Is there any kind of console configuration I need to do there, on the other um, side? There is a lot of console <laughs> configuration. Is there any <laughs> configuration? Uh, so you have your Google Play developer console. Right. Where, Which is know, just if, if you're console. publishing like a free app, you will yeah. need that. So mm -hmm. you have to set up your managed products, your subscription, whatever kind of product you're using, you have to set it up in there. You need your public key from in there uh, for in-app billing. Um, you can set up licensed test users in there for testing in-app billing. Uh, another console is the merchant console. Oh, that's, a, that's actually a very good point because like, I'm not going to pay myself to get a subscription each time I just want to test my UX flow. Um, so is there a way that I can kind of simulate a transaction without actually yeah. paying? So they have reserved product IDs. Okay. Uh, so something like Android uh, test purchased. So if you use that as your SKU or your stock keeping unit. Okay. Um, then so instead of you're buying your normal subscription, you are buying a test, test product. product, which your credit card will not be charged. Yeah. Okay. So it doesn't ask for your credit card at all. It's just going to pop a dialog from Google Play Store, which is going to show you fake information. Then you hit buy. It does a fake purchase workflow and shows a payment successful dialog. Cool. Uh, Prior to Feb 2015, there was no way to test subscriptions. So, <laughs> so how did you do that? So you could not use any of the reserved products. So you had to create a so fake product. So you just have, a, have the nice boss that gives you an open credit card and just keep charging. And just keep charging <laughs> and, um, you know, till it works. <laughs> oh, that's, yeah, but that's this, pretty bad. I'm glad that they fixed that. Yeah, yeah so earlier this year, um, when I was preparing, you know, to talk at a conference about in-app billing, right. Uh, a week before I realized uh, that they changed it and now you can use reserved products. Oh. And <laughs> yeah. yeah, so you can test subscriptions now, Good. just like you test managed products. That's great. So, wow, that's a lot. I'm so glad that you're giving a talk. Um, so we're going to switch gears a little bit. So what made you decide that you're going to give a talk on uh, in-app purchase? Um, so uh, earlier this year, I went to a conference where mm -hmm. I met Chuki. Uh, yeah, that, that was a planned <laughs> question. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Write Speak Code conference. Mm -hmm. It's um, where it teaches uh, women to, you know, talk and write and code better. Or like write blog so, posts or write yeah. books or yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I, I, in that conference, we uh, kind of figured out how to write abstracts and everything. So I thought I've worked on an app billing for a long time. Maybe yeah. I should just talk about it because there's too much information to go into a blog post. Yeah. Right. Because it started off as a blog post and I was like, this is better <laughs> off as a talk. Right. Um, so as soon as that was done, um, I started applying to conferences and uh, just got in. So, so you've talk. already <laughs> given this talk at end of con. At con. Mm -hmm. Cool. And how does it feel like when you get on stage to speak? Like, was it scary? Was it, I'm a rock star? <laughs> like, how, 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 did, how did it go? Uh, initially, it, it is scary. But once I'm up there, I feel like I, I know my topic well. Right. So I can talk a lot about it. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. I, I, you, I, you, well, basically, I think the test is, will you do it again? <laughs> yeah, I'm still doing it again. That's <laughs> good. Well, I mean, cause like you know, they always have all these like things like ooh, you know, the only thing that's more scary than death is public speaking, right? So, which I mean, I do a lot of public speaking, so I I think it's less scary than dying. Mm -hmm. But it's always interesting to hear people who have just started doing it and see how how does it feel and yeah, you know, um, I I probably attribute it to uh, you know being on stage because I I was trained in classical music so I'm oh so uh, you are used to yeah. the limelight <laughs> yeah so it's not well not really <laughs> used to limelight but I'm kind of used to being on stage mm. uh, performing so I right. guess it's just another aspect of it instead of singing you're speaking interesting yeah cool and uh, I think we have that's only the time we have for today but I. I do believe that your DryCon New York City talk will be recorded. So once that is given mm -hmm. and, and recorded and posted, uh, we're going to add a show note to this episode. Great. Thank you. Thank and you, uh, if people want to follow up, why can, can they find you on the internet? Uh, on Twitter at Yash V Prabhu and on Google Plus, Yash Prabhu. Cool. We'll also add those links in the show notes. Thank you so much. It has been great fun. Thank you. All right, then. Thanks for having me. Bye. Bye.